Hi everyone! I want to start this off right at the top with this is a hard video for me to film. Even filming it now, I feel like I'm not entirely ready, but I know that if I don't just do it, I will never be ready. And I feel like I just need to use my experience to help people and to share my story and raise awareness for the stuff that I've been through. I just felt called to share my story, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be talking about the abusive relationship that I have been in, how they destroyed my confidence, and also telling you guys how I left them and how I built myself up again after that and, you know, just everything that goes along with that. I'm even going to be talking about, you know, dealing with the trauma from it and how that's going to affect me for a while now, even though I am out of the situations. But yeah, I want to put a huge trigger warning on this video. I will be talking about abuse, toxic relationships, emotional abuse, physical abuse, just a big trigger warning for everything in this video. I'm also going to be putting any resources and hotlines down below in the description box if you guys need them. And yeah, I just want to share my story. I literally like wrote notes on this, so if you see me looking down, it's because I have a lot of information that I want to get to and I have it all here. <laughs> and I guess I want to mention this in the beginning of this video, like I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect in any of these relationships. I have a lot of flaws and I am not a perfect partner but even with that nobody deserves to be abused so I'm just leaving it at that honestly the only way that I have gotten through these emotions and even become strong enough to make a video like this is through therapy I do weekly sessions through better help and they're actually sponsoring this video I debated on putting a sponsor in this video but look if I was traumatized and I went through shitty experiences I might as well monetize that shit. <laughs> a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this portion of the video. This year in 2022, I really want to focus on tapping into all of like the darker parts of my mind, like trauma that I haven't delved into or you know like insecurities that are so deep that I just cannot reach them on my own. And one of the best ways to deal with all of that is to work with a licensed therapist. With BetterHelp, you can access a network of over 20,000 licensed therapists. Better help is not a crisis line or self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. How it works is BetterHelp will give you a little quiz and assess what your needs are and then match you with your own licensed professional therapist in as little as 48 hours. I love that they help you with this step and that it is so timely because if you have tried searching for a therapist on your own, you know it is a hard process to find somebody that you get along with, that you vibe with. You know, you want to have a good connection with your therapist. You're going to be telling them, you know, all of your deepest, darkest things. After you are matched with your therapist, you can schedule weekly phone or video sessions that you literally can do from your house with your phone or computer. There are no uncomfortable waiting rooms or like uncomfortable vibes. You're in your safe place, your home. BetterHelp is available for clients worldwide and you can actually message your therapist at any time and they will give you a timely and thoughtful response. I have been using this feature lately on BetterHelp. It's kind of nice just to like have somebody that I can check in with or vent to. But in the case where you're not like vibing with your therapist, it is so easy to switch therapists on BetterHelp. Literally, you just click a button and they match you with somebody else. They are committed to finding like the perfect match for you. So you can change your counselor as many times as you want. I think I went through three before I found my main lady that I like right now. It is also more affordable than traditional therapy and they offer financial aid. And I feel like therapy is an amazing resource for anybody. Like anybody can benefit from therapy. And to actually help you guys with that, BetterHelp is giving you 10% off your first month with my link betterhelp.com slash Emily Lee. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who are taking charge of their mental health with an experienced professional. And yeah, I really can't recommend them enough. They help me genuinely in my daily life and have helped me overcome so many things. So yeah, check them out if you want to. Thank you to BetterHelp once again for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into regularly scheduled programming. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I feel like when talking about confidence and relationships, we need to start with childhood. I don't have the best relationships with my parents or family. I was raised by one parent who, you know, we've, we definitely have our differences and we've talked about things and we've overcome a lot. But, you know, as a child, I will say the parent relationship that I had with the person who was raising me was abusive and toxic. Like, relationships don't just need to be with partners. They can be with family, they can be with friends, they can be with anybody. So I feel like when you are so young, already predisposed to an abusive relationship, you don't really see the signs of it and you don't really understand that like this form of love is bad. So I already didn't know that. I already thought love came with pain, came with criticism, I felt like I had no voice. I was such a shy, shy child. And I also, you know, watched firsthand toxic and abusive abusive relationships go on where the person didn't leave and I was you know in that household having to deal with the repercussions of the abusive relationships that were in that household so you know like I just was never exposed to healthy relationships if anything all of the relationships that I was exposed to were abusive ones so I'm thinking this is okay you know like growing up like that like you think it's normal I remember specifically like in high school my friends were talking about like the biggest fight in their household and like their fights that they were talking about seemed like a regular regular Tuesday night for me <laughs> so I in that moment is when I was like whoa this is not okay what the fuck is going on like I just didn't know what love was at all I still don't really know what it is <laughs> but yeah through that obviously my self-esteem wasn't at a great point from the jump like I didn't have a great support system that was always bringing me up and lifting me up you know I felt like I was always criticized or put down or I was never good enough I had no voice I you know that's why I started making YouTube videos to have a voice but as I went to high school and you know started college fashion really helped me build my confidence you know like I found so much joy in fashion and self-expression and doing my hair and doing my makeup like crazy and like wearing all this crazy stuff and just like having fun and that's really where I grew so much confidence so you know at years maybe 16 17 18 that's really where I developed a sense of who I was and I was able to break out of you know like the abusive family relationships and stand up for myself and realize like this is not okay I need to like focus on me and just make myself happy I can't live for them anymore and that's great I am so proud of myself for going through that time but after I spent so long building this confidence and building this love with myself I ended up falling into an abusive romantic relationship which completely destroyed me this one I'm not gonna talk about in detail because you know you guys have seen my relationship like the one I'm talking about so I don't want to like drag anybody's name through the mud or anything but you know it was emotionally abusive basically it was very much like I was this type of person but they didn't want me to be that type of person anymore it was like they didn't like the colorful hair they didn't like the fashion they didn't like that I was loud and extra and that I liked Nicki Minaj and I liked to rap and I liked to you know have fun and go places and enjoy myself they didn't like that at all it, it would always be like oh I just dyed my hair oh like I don't like it like it looked better before always like putting me down on my physical front which you know is shitty and you can definitely see that through my fashion from that time and you know just my overall presence like I just was so insecure in who I was because I just was constantly told that the person that I was naturally and the person that I built up was bad or was wrong or was ugly or was obnoxious you know I feel like for me what really damaged me from that relationship is the emotional abuse that attacked me as a person like constantly I was told like I wasn't good enough I wasn't talented enough I'm doing this wrong oh my videos are bad in this way oh I, you're not funny I would be told multiple times that I was not funny just to my face with a straight blank face like you're not 
funny. So of course I'm not gonna think I'm funny if the person that I love is telling me over and over and over like you're not funny, you're not smart, you're not talented, you're not this and you're not that like constantly putting you down you're gonna feel like shit, you know? like my confidence took such a downfall my career took a downfall because like my career was me my career has always been putting out content, expressing myself, like being me I built a career on being me and I'm seeing this person who I idolize and who I'm in love with and who I'm together with forever we're gonna have a life together and they just don't like me they don't like anything about me they don't say anything nice to me and they don't even want to hang out with me or associate with me so of course I'm not gonna feel confident to make videos of myself you know the fact that my career took a hit because of a man is kind of like looking back at it I'm disappointed in myself but also I just didn't know and I feel like through all of this I just need to be gentle with myself and know like I did my best and I tried my best and I just didn't know better you know so yeah I went through that relationship um it was very isolating that was another form of abuse I think that went through with that one I I felt like they isolated me from my friends from my family I just felt like I was like stuck in the house with them and they didn't even want to associate or talk to me they just wanted me to be stuck in the house which nobody should go through that imagine living with a person and barely talking to them throughout your day and you're supposed to be in love you basically just want me like you just want me as property at that point and that took such a toll on me I felt ugly and I just felt like I was constantly being put down and it was very similar to the relationship I had as a child with my parents when I saw that it was all matching up in that way I was like yeah no this is not okay I know something is wrong I'm not gonna lie I was trying to leave that relationship for four years and for some reason I had faith in it after every single fight I had faith in it I thought we were in love and I thought that everything was gonna get better but you know how I left that relationship finally was it dragged on for so long that I really fell out of love I had no love for the person because there was nothing left for me to love the way that you're acting towards me does not make me want to love you you know and i realized that i would have a better time hanging out with random other people than the person that i was supposed to spend my whole life with and that showed me like bro you need to be in charge of your own life and you need to have fun and you like a lot of things that this man is not letting you enjoy like i was not even allowed to play Nicki minaj in the car okay and you know whatever that relationship lasted very long longer than it should have basically how i finally you know ended that one is i had to sit there and have a real talk like the final last talk about this because we would always be like are we gonna break up are we gonna break up are we gonna stay together what's going on we're fighting whatever whatever i was so un happy that i had to just rip the band-aid off basically i just went to him and was like yeah this is really not going to work for me anymore and i just can't like i physically mentally cannot do it anymore and you know he moved out with no issue and that one was that <laughs> that left me with a lot of emotional scars but i just didn't realize at the time how insecure i got like while i was with him near the end is when i realized like i need to live for me and i started just doing what I wanted to do like he didn't like pink hair oh I dyed my hair pink oh well you know like I started just not caring what he thought and that really gave me more confidence to leave but still I didn't even realize like how bad my like self-esteem was hit because like when I was with him I feel like I was even borderline being like a pick me girl like I was just like trying to please him so bad that I just like if he put down like women wearing a lot of makeup I would just be like okay I guess I'm not wearing makeup anymore like it was like like that it was like this man didn't like me so much <laughs> that I just was trying to change my entire self to have him like me when in reality I just had to leave <laughs> and I knew from the first year of us dating that I should leave I knew it from the first year but did I leave no but eventually you know it took me four years but I did it but now I want to talk about my second abusive relationship that I went through which I feel like is worse but they're both bad in different ways you know because I was so insecure and vulnerable like I just wanted somebody to love me properly like I just wanted somebody to give me all the love and affection and help that this other man was not giving me I fell into this relationship 
relationship with some boy I met in Brooklyn <laughs> um, and this one was very very much like the typical toxic social media abusive relationship the man is a cheater a manipulator a gaslighter angry toxic masculinity all of that and this relationship you know is fresher so it is hard for me to talk about it I've only recently come to terms with what happened to me and started opening up to my friends and family about it but yeah I've been working with my therapist through it and this relationship was shitty it was like constant gaslighting every single day it was like love bombing and just being you know like the perfect boyfriend to my face but then like literally lying and cheating and manipulating me in every other way when I wasn't looking you know like I don't want to go like too into it but it would literally be like him talking to multiple other girls while literally living with me so obviously I knew something was up so you know then you start searching for shit and you become obsessive and it takes over you like that shit takes over you you know and you know it escalated to the point where I would confront him all the time like what's this in your phone like who is this why are you doing this like how can you do this to me and you know it escalated to the point of like abuse like physical abuse and this is so hard for me to talk about but yeah he was physically abusive to me manipulative like lie to my face every single day saying how like he's not doing anything and that we're good and that we're happy and that we're in love meanwhile like you're literally living a double life and you're also like hurting me physically because of things that you're doing you know it took me a long time to come to terms with like if he is cheating and I bring it up there's no reason for me to get hit you know I always thought about it as like oh I'm starting a problem so I guess he's angry and it's justified it's not justified nobody deserves that like he caught me at such a vulnerable insecure time that he was able to do this all to me you know right now as I who I am as a person this is probably over a year later from when I met him I would never deal with the shit that he was putting me through he was putting me through so much I could not work I could not eat I could not function like I would wake up every single day and like check like phones like I would check like three phones at one point I was checking three different phones in my house and like my day would be determined by if I found something or not so if I didn't find anything great we would be happy it would be a nice day but if I found something you know 7 a.m. the day would start with an argument and lead to abuse leaving that one was really hard because I I felt like he loved me I didn't want to believe that he was doing this he told me oh I'm talking to this girl because of work or I'm talking to her because of this and you know I want to believe him when you're in love and you're attached you want to believe them and you know I became severely attached to him because I just went through this breakup I was not alone for four whole years and suddenly I was alone now I have a person who wants to be with me so yeah I'm attached to them we do everything together we grocery shop together we do the laundry together you know we built a real relationship Relationship. He ended up like manipulating me into staying here for free and then I was like nah you gotta pay and then he started paying and like you know things got shitty and I feel like he used me and used my vulnerable state to take advantage of me and to manipulate and gaslight and abuse me. I also want to put this out there that if you get cheated on you're not the problem. The other person is the problem. I sat here for so long comparing myself to other girls and and wondering why he won't just stop entertaining other girls it is not me I realized that shit is not my issue that is his issue and that's gonna be an issue that he's gonna deal with for the rest of his life if he never comes to term with it and you know I said I didn't want to drag my first relationship through the mud but this guy's name I will drag through the fucking shit <laughs> like I will drag his name through Minor. <laughs> he was shitty and it sucks that I had to go through that and I'm really sad that I had to go through a relationship like that and it affects me tremendously every single day but I do want to talk about how I left this relationship because I feel like when abuse gets that far it's really hard to leave you know I basically every single time I cried I would look in the mirror look at myself how shitty I looked how emotionally broken I looked, and tell myself you need to be okay without him you need to let him go you need to be okay without him you need to let him go you are fine alone you can do this I 
would affirm this over and over and over again. I will tell you, it took me about two months of this to actually believe it and to actually leave. And those two months were hell. Like, those months were so shitty. Probably the most, like, broken and confused I've ever felt in my life. You know, if you're being gaslighted every single second of your day, like, bro, you're gonna question your reality. You basically get brainwashed to, like, be their partner. Like, you, they brainwash you in a way, and it's just not cool, it's abusive. And basically, how I left is, like, I was asking the universe or anybody, even God, like, for a sign. And, you know, a sign popped up randomly one day, and it really, like, showed him in the act of just like you're a shitty ass person and you're a cheater and a liar and a manipulator and a gaslighter and when i saw that i knew in that moment i had to kick him out of the house through me trying to leave for two months we went through like me trying to kick him out of the house multiple times like at least five times where i would like put all his stuff in a garbage bag throw it down the stairs and then you know we would make up because he would tell me that it's not true and you know just that shit <laughs> But what I did is I called my cousin who's a tough ass bitch and I said girl I need to kick him out today Please just be here with me to make sure he doesn't manipulate me into staying again So she came she did that I will say she did that she really was there for me in that moment So she came we kicked him out we said fuck you cursed him out whatever a whole toxic ass drama happened I don't even want to speak on it because we had a whole scene in front of my house and I'm not even a scene type of person that's how you know he brought the worst out of me because like I was in a long-term relationship and I never would make a scene and now suddenly this new guy's here and like he has me making a scene like that's how you know the mental was fragile <laughs> but yeah you know after I kicked him out like there was a few times where he came back and we talked or you know I went to him and tried to talk it out um but dead ass my dad just flew me to Florida with the fam and was like just stay here for a bit so I guess like my family really helped me get out of that situation in addition to me being strong enough and telling myself like girl you do not deserve this shit like you don't deserve this shit finally I just had one last combo with him basically like block me on everything I'm blocking you on everything I don't want to talk to you again you're a joke and you're a shitty person and just leave me the fuck alone and when I did that, I felt a lot better. Literally after that relationship, I realized like I need to live for me. I have a career. Like I had this beautiful career that was just broken and destroyed because I felt bad about myself because of these men and because of abuse. Another way that helped me leave, I wish I'd mentioned this before, but I just remembered it, is to remember. You have your own reality. Like you have hobbies that you enjoyed before them. You have hobbies that don't include them. You have friends and you have family members who have nothing to do with these people. And I realized when I like focus on my life and my reality, that is when I'm able to leave because I realize I don't need these shitty ass people, you know? Like I don't need this in my life. My mental health is the most important to me and I'd rather be alone and love myself than be with somebody who doesn't love me. Now I want to talk about like the trauma that I deal with now and the triggers and stuff like that i for a very long time was dealing with flashbacks in my house so like when i like looked at a spot where it's like conflict happened or like you know i was like pushed down or like i was bruised i would look at that spot in my house and see the vision again and literally like dissociate for like a couple minutes and just relive the trauma and that's not something that anybody deserves to go through like i wouldn't wish that on anybody because you have already dealt with the trauma and you finally are are out of it and you're like okay I can move on with my life but then you keep seeing it and you keep thinking about it and you feel those emotions come up over and over again because you're reliving it so something that helped me a lot is I rearranged my entire house like I moved everything so that there's no similarity of what it looked like you know obviously I can't like move the floor <laughs> or like the structure of the house but at least I can create this space that is just just for me and is new and is fresh. I also cleanse the house very often and I noticed like when I cleanse the 
the house, it feels fresh. But in those areas where I had such deep rooted trauma and I kept getting the flashbacks, I could not cleanse those areas for the life of me. Like nothing felt good about those areas. Even if you don't believe in cleansing, like just like that's some shit. Like that's some mental shit that you can't even like walk past an area because it's gonna trigger you. But now I just really try to focus on my reality. Like know that I have a blooming career, that I have friends, that I'm happy with myself and that I love self-expression and music and art and I have hobbies and things that I like and there are people here to support me for who I am. I don't need to change myself. I don't need to feel bad that I'm not good enough for somebody. And you know, yes, like love will be hard for me in the future. Love and affection and anything romantic is extremely triggering to me. And I've kind of just vowed right now to just stay single and focus on me for a bit because I cannot afford to get like triggered all the time even if it is for love like I'm always like a person who like loves love and you know all of that but like I can't handle it because of the trauma that I've gone through and the abuse that I've gone through so I'm just not ready for it yet and that is okay and I am taking like the time for myself do I still have my little friends and my little sneaky links yes but am I gonna fall in love no <laughs> I don't even think I'm able to right now like I think I'm like a little broken in that front not broken but just like guarded I realize now it is so important to see red flags and to listen to them in all of my relationships and all of my situations where things have gone to shit there was always a red flag on the first day that I met them that was a telling sign something that really has been helping me that my therapist has been working with me on is identifying cognitive dissonance and also dissociation so so cognitive dissonance is from my understanding like literally that like icky feeling that you have that you don't even really know what you're feeling like you don't know if you're scared or nervous or worried or sad or mad like you don't really know what's the feeling but you know in your body something is wrong that is cognitive dissonance and that feeling used to scare me because I would be like am I going crazy what the fuck is going on but now I just know that is a warning sign that is a telling sign and even if I don't know the reason for it I still need to listen and also dissociation Association. I have been working with my therapist. Basically, we have concluded that I learned how to dissociate from a very, very young age and I enjoyed that feeling of being numb and feeling like you're not in your body. If you don't know what dissociation is, it's basically when like you're kind of like living, but you're not really like living. Like you're kind of just like watching yourself go through your daily life and just everything is like numb and it's like on autopilot type of vibe. Apparently, I learned about that at a super young age and I felt so comfortable in that feeling that that is just something that I've been using as a coping mechanism my entire life so now I realize like when I feel out of it and I feel dissociated because I know how it feels now I know something is wrong and I know that I need to figure it out and like really like the like chemical signs of your body can be so telling especially when it comes to trauma because trauma is in here like deep rooted in here your body can tell you signs and I need to just listen to my body now and I need to just like not fall into the same patterns and just come to terms with the fact that I don't really know what is healthy love and that is okay like when it comes it comes if it never comes it never comes I mean I hope it comes I think it will come I'm hopeful but um it will be right like when it's healthy and it's good everything will be good and it will fall into line I'm okay to wait however long for that I don't even really want a partner right now <laughs> especially after everything I've been through like I I'm scared to have that trust in another person you know but yeah I guess that's my whole experience I feel like I'm in a much better headspace now than I have been in the past couple of months really like all of the summer was me going through the really abusive relationship and I feel like that was definitely shown in videos and Instagram pictures like you can just tell something is wrong I remember even and, like I posted one Instagram picture where like I lost a lot of weight and like I don't know if you could really see it but I could tell like I saw like my bruises on me and I remember somebody commented are you okay and that shit made me sob like if I was like putting my hair in a ponytail with like a tank top on I would look in the mirror and see bruises and like that doesn't make you feel good you know that doesn't make you feel good at all but yeah I, I don't want to fall into that headspace again
weekend, so I really want to focus on positivity right now to end this off. I'm sending you guys so much love if you've related to anything in this video. Nobody deserves to experience what I experienced, and that's the reason why I even wanted to share my story, because if I could at least like reach out to one person and help them, that that's enough for me, because you know, I felt so alone during these relationships, and I didn't even know like they were abusing me. That's the thing, like I didn't know that it was abuse until recently. You know, I just want you guys to know like your experience is valid and you know, even if you feel like things weren't that bad, like take a step back and really reflect on the situation and maybe even talk about it with a third party because sometimes you need a third party to be like, that shit was really bad. My therapist was the one to tell me like that it was abusive I couldn't just like come to terms with it on my own like I didn't want to believe it So sometimes you need that other person, you know, but yeah speaking of therapy I just want to say again. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video If you guys want to check them out my link will be down below It's betterhelp.com slash emilyly and it gets you 10% off truthfully Like I really think BetterHelp is an amazing resource and I use it so often like I literally use it more multiple times a week and I have a great relationship with my therapist on there I feel like she helps me immensely like I wouldn't have been able to film this video if it wasn't for her to be honest I wouldn't have had the courage or the strength or even the knowledge but yeah if you want to check out better help it will be down below I don't really know how to end this video <laughs> this is heavy you know this is a heavy ass topic I'm sending you guys so much love hotlines and resources will be down below if you need them yeah I, I love you guys so much it, it really did take a lot for me to film this video and even right now I'm feeling a little of that like cognitive dissonance feeling so I feel like I just need to like take a break and smoke a blunt <laughs> but I love you guys so much thank you for being so supportive like you guys are really a part of my support system and you know as I said you need a great support system to get through tough situations so yeah that was my experience with abusive relationships and you know how they really like crushed me there's hope there's always hope you can always get out and you can always always live for you and realize your worth and realize that you don't need to deal with this anymore that you are stronger and you are worthy and you're amazing and if, if you're amazing you don't need to be dealing with shit you don't need to be dealing with shitty partners that's what i realize now <sighs> but yeah anyways let's close off this video you guys are amazing i'm amazing we're amazing we're gonna fuck shit up together <laughs> and yeah i love you guys <laughs>